guys, it's Pat. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share some ways on how you can customize your MacBook when you're feeling a little bored or when you just want to add a little spice to your screens because if you're like me who easily gets tired of the same screen design, the same screen layout, especially when you're using your laptop 24-7, then you would want to customize your MacBook one way or another. Before we get started, this video is actually recorded with the help of Wondershare Demo Creator. Wondershare Demo Creator is a screen recorder and a video editor software that is great for making online tutorials, product presentations, game recording, and academic projects. It's amazing how you can get a screen recorder and a video editor in just one application. I think because we're having online classes or maybe even working from home, most of our projects and presentations are screen recordings. So I think it's great that you can have an application that records your screen and edits your recordings in just a very convenient way. So when you open up Demo Creator, you can choose Choose to click capture for recording or video editor for editing. I'm gonna walk you through some of their features with screen recording being the first one. When you click on capture, as you can see, I can record my screen and myself at the same time. This saves you a lot of time and resources from using another camera just to record yourself and another application just to record your screen. You can also customize your recording area to either full screen, custom size, or a specific window. So if I choose to record a specific window, I can just select Select on Chrome, for example, and it will only record that window of your screen. You can also adjust the frame rate, audio input, and camera resolution. Now, aside from screen recording, they also have, again, a video editor. So let's say I have a clip that I have pre-recorded. I just simply import it to the application, and you can see from the sidebar that they have a lot of features that you can choose from. You can add text, you can add annotations, stickers, transitions, effects. You can see under effects that they have a green screen. So in case you wanted to change your background, you can just use this effect. Very convenient. And the interesting thing that I found here, well for me it's really useful, is cursor effects. What's great about Demo Creator is it detects your cursor and adds a highlight to it so that it's very visible when you're making a step-by-step -step tutorial or presentation. On the right menu, you can customize your video settings so you can change the scale, you can rotate your video, you can also change the opacity, and you can also change the speed. As Aside from that, you can also customize the effects that you added. So in this case, I can change the color of the cursor highlight and the opacity of the effect. They also have an ongoing campaign to share your productivity secret from December 1st to the 27th. Just recommend any one of your productivity secrets using Wondershare Demo Creator and get a chance to win some of their amazing prizes. So if you're interested to try out Demo Creator, you can click the link below in the description box and I'd be happy to see all your creative works using Demo Creator. Again, thank you so, so much to Demo Creator for sponsoring this video. Okay, moving on to the video, the first customization tip that I have for you is for your background. I prefer to keep my background on the minimalist, neutral, and warmer side. That's usually the combination that I look for when I'm browsing through different pictures online. Before, I used to opt for colorful wallpapers because my mindset was the more vivid the colors are on my screen, the more awake I would be. But a while back, I decided to go for the more muted ones, more minimal, more refreshing to the eye, something less in your face. Obviously, this is personal reasoning, but if you wanted to go for the colorful wallpapers, then go ahead. If you wanted to go for the more muted ones, more minimal, then go ahead, do you. So I usually get my desktop wallpapers from two websites. The first one being Pinterest. This is where I usually get design ideas, color schemes, layout inspiration, anything that has the concept of creativity in it, Pinterest is the way to go. Actually, if you guys want me to publicize my boards, not that anyone's following me on Pinterest, but if you guys want to see some creative inspiration that I have used and collated over the past months, then just let me know in the comments below. So when I go to Pinterest, I usually search up minimalist desktop wallpapers and the results will show you a bunch of wallpapers that you can choose from. If you want to get something more specific, just add more keywords to the search bar and the results will be narrowed down to those keywords. So if you found the wallpaper that you like, you just save it as a picture I already have mine saved on my desktop. And what you want to do is right click on the picture, 
share and import it to your photos first there's already an option to save it directly as a desktop wallpaper but it usually gets removed if you don't import it to your photos first so once you have that you just go to your photos share and set as desktop picture the next website where you can get wallpapers is pexels pixels pexels <laughs> anyway this is where i usually get my wallpapers for my phone and my laptop because although you can't find those abstract animated type wallpapers here you can find a bunch of aesthetic photos that you can use as wallpapers so in pexels i usually search up warm nature or dried flowers and the results will typically show you a bunch of high quality aesthetic photos that you can choose from when you've chosen a picture the process is pretty much the same when setting it as your desktop picture moving on screensaver my screensaver is this digital clock which i got from Flicklo. i will have every website that i mentioned in the description box below so if you want to check anything out, just go to the description box. Anyway, if this is easy to download, you just go to their website, click on whatever device you're using, download, and when you click on the file, it will automatically save as one of your screensavers. You can also customize the time format, scale or size, and brightness. Now that we're on this window, the next customization tip that I have for you is hot corners. Hot corners allow you to set certain corners of your screen for a specific command or action. For example, the top right corner of my screen is set to desktop. So when I navigate to the top right corner, it will automatically show me my desktop screen. I think this is useful when you have your schedule or certain notes pinned on your desktop and you don't want to go through minimizing each and every window that you have opened. So instead of doing that, you can just navigate to a specific corner of your screen. When you're done and you want to go back to your windows, just click on any side of your screen. There are also other commands that you can set it to, so just go ahead and browse through them next are widgets now if you've updated your phone to ios 14 you know that widgets are very much on trend these days widgets enable you to see all your apps at a glance without having to open each and every one of them if that makes sense so with the latest software update on your macbook which is big sur there's actually already a section that is dedicated specifically for widgets so when you click on the date and time on your menu bar a pullout panel will slide in from the right side of of your screen this will display your notifications and selected widgets when you choose to edit your widgets the options lean towards the more practical apps like calendar clock notes and photos but if you want to opt for something more aesthetic just go to your app store and download dash dot dash before you open the app though make sure that you've already saved the picture and make sure that you have imported it to your photos once you have that just go to the app click on add a widget set image and you can choose from the pictures that you imported a while ago after that just click on save go to your notification center edit widgets scroll down to the bottom and add as a widget there you have it just rearrange and customize it however you want that fits your laptop's aesthetic next are highlight colors now this adds a pop of color to your screen which i think is great so the default highlight color on your macbook is i think blue but that's kind of mm, i don't think that's very exciting to look at so when you go to your system preferences and you go to general you can choose from a variety of colors as your accent and highlight color i have mine set to orange but let's say i wanted it to be pink as you can see the buttons and highlights change to pink you can also customize it apart from these colors using the color wheel or color codes so just go ahead and customize it however you want next are sticky notes now macbooks come with a sticky note app which is called stickies so when you open the app you can choose to change the color of the window change the transparency and change the font another cool thing that you can do on stickies is you can actually insert a photo here and it makes it look like the photo is pinned on your desktop which i think is so cool so to do that i have this photo of a calendar here but if you simply copy and paste this to the sticky note as you can see the photo is too big for the size of the sticky note so what you want to do is zoom out on the photo command shift 4 screenshot and it will save it as another photo and resize to one that would fit the sticky note so when you have that just drag the photo to your sticky note and you're good to go next are folder icons if you are the type of person who likes to keep folders on your desktop but the default blue folder icon doesn't really match the aesthetic of your screen there's actually a way to change it to a custom icon so i have saved an icon that i like and what you want to do is command a to select the entire photo command c to copy 
copy and then you want to go to your folder right click get info highlight the blue folder icon on the top left of the window and command v to paste so it's just as easy as that just copy your icon and paste it to the default folder icon the last customization tip that i have for you is changing your font i go to this website called dafont.com and this is where you can find all the different fonts ranging from serif calligraphy cartoon literally any font style that you want you can find it here so when you download your font you just go to font book which is pre-installed installed in your MacBook and just add it as your font. Once you've added that, you're good to use it in any of your applications. So those are all of the MacBook customization tips that I have for you. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!